کنفرانس بین المللی ایران چشمانداز تغییر 29 ژوئن 2018 پنل دوم سپاه پاسداران و مداخلات در منطقه Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen thank you all for coming here uh, to attend this exceptional panel on the role of the Iranian revolutionary guard Pazdaran in the region. Today's panel is exceptional because it has to do with the central nerve, the core of the Iranian regime's expansion in the region. But it's good to have a sense of who we have on the panel that would lead us to understand their expertise with regard to the remarks they are going to be offering. Um, I am now in the United States, but I was born and raised in, in Beirut, Lebanon. My first contact with Iranian studies was as old as 1987, where I published a book in Arabic, Time, on the rise of the Islamic Republic of Iran, in which I projected that eventually, because of the ideology, the ideology as a genesis by itself, the Iranian opposition knew that before all of us, but we started to realize that the Iranian regime, because of its initial ideology, to which you would add geopolitics and economics and ambitions, originally will tend to expand in the region. It was in the DNA. Along this whole region, the Iranian regime always had the ambition to become regional, and, at the, and in the center of which, of which you have the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Last but not least, as of 2010, as we start hearing about incidents out of Sada in the north of Yemen. While the American media, the international media, didn't even know where Sada was, we realized that this is a Iranian regime project, which eventually, years later, hooked up with the, with the Houthis, and the rest is history as you know it. So this panel is going to be addressing, from different angles, extraordinary experiences, the expansion of the Pazdaran in the region as a central force for the Iranian regime in trying to create the much wider sphere of influence. And I can tell you, but that's not our panel, that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard has projects around the world. Mm -hmm. As United States Congress hearings and our agencies' uh, analysis have, have, have established, all the way to Africa, all the way to Latin America, and East Asia as well. Uh, the JCP, JCPOA and the American reluctance to engage in the region, region have not moderated Iran's behavior at home or abroad, which is somewhat, uh, I think, uh, the, the JCPOA was, was based a lot on hope and some naivete. Uh, it didn't work out as it should have. Uh, you can argue whether we probably should have kept that and gone harder on Iran over the next several years, but uh, Iran's intervention around the region and specifically its support for sectarian militias in regional conflicts drives both Shia and Sunni violent extremism. Currently, Iran's regional ambitions depend most crucially on consolidating its control over Syria and Iraq and thereby cementing its predominance over the geostrategic heart of the Middle East and securing a land bridge to Hezbollah and the Mediterranean. In Syria, Iran is estimated to have spent $30 billion to date helping Assad brutally reconquer the country, including providing shock troops and military advisors for Assad's offenses, offenses including the infamous Ghouta Offensive near Damascus in the spring of 2018, ethnically cleansing former Sunni majority areas retaken by re the regime by repopulating them with Iranian-backed militias and their families, allowing Syrian regime forces to take over positions in the southwestern Syria opposite Israel and Jordan by withdrawing Iranian-aligned militias, when in fact Iranian militias are just staying and donning Syrian uniforms, 
continuing to supply pro-Assad militias in Syria and build military bases for the IRGC and its proxies in Sir Syria. In Lebanon, Iran is accused of trying to build at least two underground fa factories for the construction of precision missiles for Hezbollah. On March 15, Secretary Mattis said that the Iranians used Yemen as a weapon, weapons proving ground. Iran's aggressive meddling around the region and the expensive bill it rung up in the process contributes directly to the causes for growing unrest at home. Iran's aggressive meddle, uh, since December 2017, multiple waves of protest, as you all well know, across Iran have arisen due to the regime's economic management, systematic cor corruption, and suppression of basic freedoms for Iranians. Repeatedly, protesters' grievances expanded to include the regime's support for the Hezbollah and the cost of intervention in Syria. We need to maintain a military presence in Syria and Iraq to prevent the reemergence re of ISIS and provide security for a stable post-war political process, reconstruction, and diminish Iranians' influence that could jeopardize these objectives. We need to work with regional allies to step up maritime monitoring and interdiction efforts in the Red, Arabian, and Mediterranean seas, as well as an effort to hinder Iran's use of civilian aircraft for transporting military supplies and personnel. So, thank you. Thank you so much, General. We've used the term meddling for years regards the IRGC involvements, but I think that word no longer uh, satisfies, no longer uh, meets the requirement. Today, I see their activities uh, being described uh, through such words as uh, interdiction, subversion, cancer, uh, and even takeover of uh, Middle East governments. Uh, uh, Syria, by far, uh, represents uh, the most significant effort by the IRGC, and I think for them, uh, their most dangerous effort. Uh, by most estimates, there are today between 10 and 12,000 Iranian troops uh, in Syria, and that number uh, jumps to 50, 60, 70,000 if you include the Shiite militias there that include Pakistanis, Afghanis, uh, and even Iraqis. But in their estimates, between 30 and 60 billion dollars that have been spent on behalf of IRGC activities uh, in the fight in Syria. Uh, General Soleimani views uh, that the IRGC has achieved tremendous momentum over the last decade. However, they now face uh, situations at home that they have never seen before. Casualty rates that include at least 2,000 Iranian nationals and, and as many as 4,000 of the IRGC, significant resources have been spent. Iran normally has a defense budget on the range of $16 billion a year. And much, much more than that is being spent in this war in Syria. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, inviting me. Uh, first, uh, we may like, uh, uh, let me say, we may like bad people and bad guys, but we don't like them to be in our borders. So that is, I think, very important to look at uh, things in the region. And I will take you back to the region and welcome to the Middle East. Uh, let me say terrorism and sectarianism are the elements through which the Iranian regime is breathing. As we in the Middle East are suffering from Iranian Revolutionary Guard, Quds forces, Iranian people inside Iran are suffering from the besieges. We see them now in, in Iranian streets uh, during the demonstration trying to push against those people and to smash them. This is very important. It, they are, the refugee guard controls at least 40% of Iranian economy. The Iranian regime is using those militias in claiming they are pushing against ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nusra, and other groups. But that is not reality because the, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the Iranian political system, started those issues before those groups uh, appear. In order to, to push back against the strategy, we have to create our strategy to, to um, confront or contain or push back against this strategy. I think we have three or four uh, main suggestions. One is legal confrontation through interna internal, uh, international and regional uh, organizations. This is very important. 
we, we, know, we have to raise issue, I mean, legal issues, legal, uh, you know, in, in different uh, uh, international organization against the Iranian political system, especially also about the Revolutionary Guard. Second, economic confrontation. And we know the Revolutionary Guard contain uh, or has lots of international companies with different names, sometimes or mostly with civilian names. You cannot identify, identify them, you cannot know them because they don't have history. So I think we need to make index of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards entities that we cannot do business with those groups. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, we have to have a, a definition. Terrorism, any group uh, you know, fits in this uh, definition, we have to fight against them. To be ISIS, to be Al-Qaeda, to be Jabhat al-Nusra, uh, Fatimiyun, Zainabiyun, otherwise, otherwise, we will not get rid of these groups. This is uh, important. Uh, the fourth uh, suggestion it is between the governments, intelligence cooperations and exchange of information about Iranian regime activities and Iranian, uh, Iranian uh, or revolutionary guard entities. If we don't exchange, uh, exchange ideas uh, and, and information, we cannot push back and get rid of Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard business. Those are, I think, the most important ideas.